Who are you? Episode 8 Anyway, we have a suspect. One Sergei Zelisguk. Another one up-and-coming fighter with corruption. He and Shannon were grazing the same field, fighting for some fat anti-corruption grants. Yeah, they have been arguing publicly a lot recently. Arguing publicly because of the grants? It doesn't sound wise. In his last speeches, Shannon was transparently hinting at Zalischuk's dark past. Does Zalischuk have something to hide? I think he does, actually. He has a conviction. It was a juvie and he got a suspended sentence, but he doesn't mention that in his biography. And we have Zalischuk's fingerprints on Shannon's safe. And the housekeeper overheard his argument with some Sergi on the night of murder. So the housekeeper seems shady too. Irina Tishko. Just half a year ago, she worked as an immunologist in the Institute of Neurosurgery, and then she somehow became Shannon's housekeeper. Where's Mochia? I don't know. She didn't tell me where she went. Very funny. I'll have to look for her around the entire directorate. What is it? Dasha sent the results of the autopsy. Are you coming? I mean you both. Well, here is your Vic customer. He died last night between 6 and 7 p.m. The first bullet hit the femoral vein and the second entered the brain. Judging from minimal bleeding, the headshot was made after the death. Did he have any chances to survive after the first shot? Only if with immediate medical help. The blood loss needed to be stopped immediately. It wasn't done. That's why I say he bled to death in five, seven minutes at the most. Was the shot made point blank? Yes, point blank. There are traces of oil and gunpowder on Shannon's hands. And I am almost sure he was struggling for the gun with somebody. During the struggle, the gun went off Shannon fell on the floor and rolled on it, clutching at the wound. This is why his hands were bloody, and the person with the gun, well, I don't know, maybe he was thinking of what to do next. Maybe he simply was standing there and smoking, waiting for Shannon to kick the bucket, and then he came up and shot him right between the eyes. And that's it, no professionalism needed, just strong nerves. Dasho, what does he have? Here, above the eye and on his forehead some kind of particles in the hair it's not gunpowder it's dust i thought so too at first but it's regular ash from a cigarette i just don't understand one thing how it ended up there did the killer blow the ash into his face after death oleg i am ready to present the profile to the team what damn hitman it's a scam for the journalists. Your hitman watched too many criminal dramas. A real hitman wouldn't leave Shannon a single chance. He wouldn't even be able to grab his gun, even more so get it out of the safe. I agree. I'd also exclude a common robbery. The safe is empty, all the valuables are in place. The main thing is, Shannon was at home at least two hours before the murder. Not a single robber would do a job with the owner inside. Yes. There are no traces of burglary. It means Shannon let the murderer in himself. They were talking in the office. He even opened the safe in his presence. It was somebody from his inner circle. Why did he even go into the safe in his guest presence? Did he want to take the weapon, the money, or something else? Come in, please. Have a seat, Irina. On that chair. I'll come back. In two minutes? Are you sure it won't take long? I have important business. It really won't. If you had told me everything, that you know. A 
the subject is somebody Shannon knew, for sure, that he called for an urgent talk. The conversation was unpleasant and directly connected to his earlier guest, the unwanted one. After he had left, Shannon panicked, mixed whiskey with a sedative and called the housekeeper. What's the damn deal with the housekeeper and the guests? Tishko. These unexpected guests, as far as I understand, he was a public figure. People should have visited him sometimes. I would have been so in a normal case, but judging from Shannon's house, he clearly had OCD. What? The obsessive compulsive disorder. In his case, it was misophobia, a pathological fear of dirt and germs. Remember looking through his house, lots of cleaning products, disinfectants, what wipes on every corner. So that's why the whole place was smelling like an operating room. Does it happen often? Pretty often for public figures. Experts believe that this happens because of heightened stress and the lack of privacy. So basically, with this crap in the head, he wouldn't invite somebody over. Only in extreme cases. Hence, I think that the urgent cleanup in Shannon's nervousness was connected to the fact that in his opinion, a person who came to him was not clean enough, that's why he went crazy. Yeah, maybe somebody came from prison. That's where you are. And more precisely. Okay. Misha, did you and Tishko examine the house? Did she notice anything there? No, she said everything's in order. Well, a pair of slippers went missing from the hallway. Wow, a robbery of a century. Is Tishko sure that they went missing? She said that she used to leave three pairs of slippers in the hallway. If somebody used them, she would add a new pair. Last night she left three pairs. This morning only two were left. Okay, Sergi. I urgently need a printout of Shannon's yesterday calls. Pasha is working on his phone. Maybe it was turned on somewhere. Go and find out. Misha, keep working on Tishko and ask her about Shannon's disease. Check the alibi. Yes, sir. Okay. You will work on Shannon's ex-wife. She might know something about the contents of the safe and about his friends. And I will go to Zalischik. Wait a minute. According to our profile, our subject is very clever, highly organized and careful. The murder was clearly spontaneous, but he reacted in a very smart way. No panic and no slip UPS so far. The only things we have found are the ones that he wanted to show us. The crime scene is a clear setup, a couple of false clues left specifically for the police. The sergeant called. Shannon's ex-wife is here. Mila Lojanova, Shannon's ex-wife, is here. The ball comes to the player. Work with her. Did something happen? No, it's nothing. I just wanted to ask, what is that parcel on your desk? It's a gift from the States. A courier brought it while we were away. What? A gift from the States brought by an anonymous courier. Tell me why this gift isn't in our lab now. You got it all wrong. It's really a present from a friend I studied at the academy with. He just didn't have time to congratulate me in America. So he sent it here via courier. You're sure? Yes, definitely. I called him and asked. Why didn't he sign it? Well, because he wanted to make a surprise. Second, he doesn't know about the present circumstances of my life. Third, everything is normal inside. There is a card and a signature. I see. Bye. Is everything all right? Yes. Fine. Well, I decided to not wait for you to come to me come here on my own. A wise decision, Mila. Please tell me, maybe your ex-husband had a wishers. Or even enemies. As a politician, Yeager was a dud. Just populist and a grant eater. He wouldn't been a nobody if not for his father's connections. Let me put it this way. He didn't grow to have serious political enemies and a hired hit. And if I were you, I'd look for a person he offended in a bad way. However, I didn't come for this. Jaeger and I are divorced, and I know nothing of his latest antics. 
I have an entirely personal and a mercantile interest. Did you find the necklace? Yes, Misha, hello. Hello, Oleg. Reporting on Tishko just like you asked. Her son, age 17, crashed on a motorbike eight months ago. Badly. Now he's a paraplegic. She doesn't have a husband, and she needs a lot of money, and you don't earn much as a doctor. So she found the best place she could. Of course, Shannon was a bit of a weirdo, but he paid well. I see. What about her alibi? It's confirmed. The taxi driver picked her up at half past five and took her to the hospital. Her son is at another examination there now. She sat there with him until 8.30. Well, having an alibi is great. Whom did your witness see then? Or he was confused while being drunk. What do you think? Listen, there is a camera by the entrance. If it's working, we'll see everything ourselves. Fine, Misha. Keep working and let Inga loose on your witness. Maybe she'll pull something out of him using her methods. Okay, I'll let her loose now. The necklace was a wedding present from Jaeger's mother, an individual piece of art. Um, diamonds and emeralds in white gold. Absolutely enchanting. High-class jewelry for a high-class bride of their golden boy. And Shannon capped the necklace after the divorce. He did. He just kept it for himself. When I was moving out, he changed the code on the safe and went somewhere on a business trip, played the last mean trick. But you're sure that he was keeping the necklace in a safe all this time? Yes, I'm absolutely sure that it still was there. Shannon had a very smart lawyer. He convinced him that it was better to divorce me peacefully. And yesterday, we agreed to meet at 7 p.m. He had to bring the necklace. But he just didn't come. I called him a couple of times. During the second call, he even picked up, kept silence for a couple of seconds and hung up. And the phone was picked up after 7? Yes. Mila, at that time, Shannon was already dead. Looks like his murdered answered your call. That's it, Cap. Last time Shannon's phone was switched on in this area yesterday at 7.20 p.m. After that, it's a dead end, and now it's out of range. That means it's either switched off or discharged. Your radius is the entire residential district. Can you narrow it down? The radius is the coverage of the nearest tower. Sorry, I can't narrow it down. Only if it's turned on. Okay, I see. I'll go handle the phone calls. Bye-bye. Yes, that's the necklace. How much can it cost? Almost half a million dollars if my appraiser didn't lie. Lieutenant, shouldn't we put out the APB on the necklace? Right? Hmm? I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Milo, you don't think highly of your ex-husband, do you? It's not about just the necklace stunt, is it? Do you know what it is? What? Yeager, Shannon's small counsel. This is how he called us. Yeager's father convinced him that King is made by his court. So, he was practicing. I understand that Shannon and you were the royal couple and the rest. Kostya das Hedev, the court jester, Yulia Karpenko, my maid of honor, Dima Smiliak, prime minister, and a real king, the best of us, smart, bright and charismatic, funny. Shannon was a mediocrity himself and was using Dima's brain. Dima knew it well, but he didn't care. He knew his own worth. Why is Smiliak's photo absent from the graduation album? Did something happen to him? It did. He was under investigation and later got a prison sentence. 
A sentence for what? For rape. Yulia Karpenko stated that he raped her at our graduation party at the Shannon Summer Cottage. Captain, we need to know when Dmitro Smiliuk's prison sentence ends. He was convicted of rape five years ago. Dmitro Smiliuk, paroled yesterday at 9 a.m. He served his term in the Barazan Medium Security Prison. Aha. Uh -huh. He was Shannon's classmate and a close friend. As for the rape, it was Yulia Karpanko, a friend of Shannon and Smiliak, who accused the latter. And I'm sure that Smiliak was Shannon's competitor in the fight for Lajanova's heart. Inga, are you a witch or something? Thank you. Well, I finally found something, and you already know it. Your fingerprint was found inside Shannon's empty safe. Besides, Shannon's housekeeper saw you arguing yesterday. I propose for you not to waste everybody's time and nerves and tell us what happened yesterday. Yes, I called him. I did. We, we had a fight. We had a fight, so what? Jaeger threatened me with God knows what, and I wanted to understand what he really had against me. And that was it. I didn't go to his place. You understand that. Your alibi is weak. Not that convincing. I didn't go to his place. Are you sure that any of your friends will confirm your alibi if they find out we're dealing with a murder? A political one. Fine. Fine, fine. I went there. It was around half past six, even closer to seven. Yes, I went there, but he was already dead. Got it. He was already dead. Hey, Shannon, why don't you close the door? Hey, is anybody home? You're not afraid. They might take away everything that you had earned with hard work. Got him, Nit. Son of a bitch. Was there anything else in the safe except for the paperwork? Nothing, just the documents. Did you see his phone by any chance? I didn't. Pay attention. I wasn't thinking about it. Fine, thanks for the sweets. And for helping the investigation. Tell me, were the papers worth it? Were they worth playing spy games? Are you mocking me, Major? Yes, I am. Bye. Listen, I've told you everything. I've signed everything. I do need to go. Irina, a couple more questions, and we'll let you go to your son at the hospital. By the way, your alibi is confirmed? Tell me about that green free-cut dress you wore that morning. Is that your permanent uniform? Yes, it's my permanent uniform. It's a compromise between a housekeeper and a medical worker. Do you wear this dress outside? Of course I don't. Shannon would fire me on the spot if he saw that. All right, heels. Do you wear heels? No. 
Sometimes, I don't sit all day, my legs swell so much by the evening. So, loafers are my everything. And the last thing, do you use perfume at work? Perfume? No. Shannon had a phobia, you know that well yourself. Of course. I just had to ask. Thanks, Irina, you helped us a lot. He's not home. Let's wait for him. Maybe let's have a bite. Yeah, let's have a bite. Freeze. Police. You weren't on the outside too long, didn't you? Well, it's a trivial story. There is a girl named Milo Lajanova. Smart, beautiful, from a good family. She was courted by a rich but primitive Jaeger Shanin and smart and handsome Dima Smiliak. From an ordinary family. That trio and two other people were celebrating their graduation. And the following morning a girl named Yulia Karpenko writes a statement to the police that she had been raped, saying that Dima got drunk, started molesting her and she couldn't fight him off. What next? Dima Smiliak was sentenced to six years of medium security. Yeager married Mila. And what about Yulia? Yulia tried to work at the firm that had already hired Smiliak. However, she didn't stay there for long because it was above her level. As far as I know, she now owns a political PR firm that cooperates with Shannon closely. Smiliak should hold a grudge against Shannon and Karpenko. You know, it seems to me that when all that noise went away, Mila Lajanova didn't believe that Smiliak was guilty. Smiliak should have had good chances with her. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> Listen, Ailing, I had a really long and crappy day. I even had to run after you too. So don't beat around the bush, talk to me. I didn't kill anybody. And the breeze blew Shannon's phone into your apartment. Yes. I took his phone. But I didn't kill anybody. What about the necklace? What necklace? An emerald one, from the safe. I'm neither a robber nor a murderer. I came there at half past six. Jaeger was already dead. And the safe was open. I didn't even. Look inside. So you don't need money, do you? You didn't need anything for happiness except for his phone. And the photo of your beloved from the album of the happy competitor, shit. You're a real drama hero. I'm neither a robber. Nor a murderer. I took the phone to find. Yuya Karpenko's number. I couldn't, it was password protected, and then it ran out of juice. He looks bad. Tuberculosis. Closed form. Yeah, when he came to Shannon looking like this, Jaeger must have pooped his pants out of fear. But actually, we don't have anything on him. That motive and opportunity. But we only have a phone as evidence. We didn't even find the missing photo from the album in his apartment. Do you remember me saying that the entire crime scene reeks of soap opera? And? The same goes for that stolen photo. Why did Smiliak need to steal Mila's college photos? I'm sure he has an entire set of photos like those at home, just like Shannon. Listen, I understand you. You are sure that Shannon and Karpenko set you up. He married your girl while you got tuberculosis in prison. Shannon was the first to come. He took out the gun. You struggled. The first shot was accidental. You were protecting yourself. You're a smart guy. 
You know that it would be better for you to sign a full confession. Why delay it? He is not our subject. Do you feel sorry for him? Only logic, Major, sir. Smilia could get emotional and shoot Shannon, but he wouldn't stay to watch him bleed. He would empty the whole magazine into Shannon. I didn't kill him. He could kill. Probably. They ruined the guy's life. On the other hand, what's smoking? He has tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, by the way. As for tuberculosis, by the way, I'm not talking to you. Yes. So, Mitro, when you found out that Yulia Karpenko got your job and Shane and married Mila, you couldn't believe in such betrayal because Yulia and Jaeger were your close friends. Therefore, as soon as you were released, you went to Shannon to clear everything up. And to know where is Yulia Karpenko, the one responsible for your prison sentence. Am I right so far? You are. You first came to Shannon around four. You didn't stay there for long. He threw you out almost immediately. Yes. He didn't even shake my hand. As if I was a leper. Then he said that he was busy. I asked him where Yulia was, and he said that he didn't. <coughs> no. Hello, Andri. Relax, Major. Your fighting dog made my day. Right. What is her name? Motia. Matilda. This is the way, but let's get down to business. What do you have? Then you met a friend who told you about something, and you went to Shannon for the second time. Who did you meet, Dima? Your classmate, maybe a teacher. It was our dean's deputy, a lovely grandpa. He always was worried about me. And while I was in prison, he came to visit me twice. Was he glad to see you? Yes, we both were glad. I asked him how Yulia was doing. He told me that she was, with Jaeger. Well, I decided to come back and look in the eyes of a person that I considered to be my friend. You came back around. Half past six. Yes, the gate was open. I hit the door with my fist. It turned out to be open too. I came inside, saw Yeager lying there with the gun beside him, and the safe was wide open. I realized that I should leave. If somebody saw me there, they would think that I did it. On my way out, I noticed a phone on the table. I decided to take it to look for Yulia's phone number. Didn't you want to look for Mila? No, I didn't. But you answered the phone call. Yes, I wanted to hear her voice. All right. Well, thank you for the sincere conversation. Wait. Did you believe me? Of course I did. And Mila believes you too. Or rather, she doesn't believe that you could do what you were accused of five years ago. Well, well done. Great work. Yeah, now we can charge Smilia. I wouldn't hurry with that. Why? 
because Inga believes that it wasn't him, and I agree with her. Then keep Smilik in detention for now, and you go on digging, Major. If you think that it wasn't him, look for the real murderer and do it fast. And what did you decide with Terran? I'll leave him. For now, he and Tarantai found common ground already. As you wish. It's you who has to work with him. Don't make yourself a new headache. And remember, he also has to keep working with Shvak. And you know his attitude towards snitches. Oh, I remember that. I do. Seems like our kind of dog. Take it away. Did they tell you when they'll return your car? They called in the afternoon and said that I may come for it any time. There was a bug inside and some GPS device in the trunk. The guys said it was really high end. I asked them to leave everything as is. Your phone was bugged too. He equipped you well. We'll have to check the apartment tomorrow. Listen, kid, the traffic police send me a recording from a camera from my rise the next to Shannon's house where the witness allegedly saw somebody. I watched it, but the recording was bad. You can see a Mazda in the yard and abroad in something green is walking past. Can you take a look? First, Michaelo, I'm not a kid, but spider. Okay. Second, did you look at the clock? Stop whining. Do it quick. Only rabbits breed quickly. Fine, give me the drive and I'll watch it at home with some beer. Okay. I'll go to my daughter at the hospital then. Fine. Bye, Pavlik. Goodbye. Jaeger did call me yesterday around 4. We only talked for a couple of minutes. I was busy. Why did he call then? Excuse me. I'll call you back. He was very agitated. He said that Dima Smiliak visited him unexpectedly and, as far as I understood, he behaved quite aggressively. Aggressively. Did he try to fight him, or threaten him, or demanded money? I don't know about fighting, but I think Jaeger either gave or promised him the money. I don't know the details, but Dima said, I will have my revenge on you for setting me up. Did you really set him up? Come on, I wouldn't embarrass myself like that. What else did Shannon say? Um, that was it. He said to be careful. He means Smiljak, right? He didn't say that, but... But I understood him that way. What about Stepanik's witness? Did you pull anything useful out of him? No, just the same, just after. 5.30 he saw an unknown blue car in the yard. And he saw a woman from the back, tall plump, with dark hair, dressed in something green that looked like Tishko's uniform. Her hair was done, and she was on heels, looked like high heels. Also, he paid attention to the specific aroma of her perfume, something zesty, like lemon, grapefruit or orange. But we know that it wasn't Tishko. I think it happened like this. Smiljak didn't ask Shainan for money. Maybe Karpenko could come to him, and Shainan could demand her to leave the country to lie low. And she demanded Mila's necklace for that. Shannon opened the safe and took out not a necklace but a gun. And threatened her. She is the skittish type. And by the way, she fits the profile of our subject like no other. 
Anyway, Spider worked his magic on a drive from the road camera. We can't see the woman's face, but we have seen the license plate number of that car in the yard. Did you find the owner of the car? For sure. The owner is Yulia Karpenko. She parked there at 5.40 and left at 6.20. Hello? Hello. Good afternoon. Where is Yulia? You just missed her. She left for the airport 40 minutes ago. Right. She's going to New York. The flight is in three hours. Is it Yulia's dress? It is. What perfume aroma is it? So strong. Grapefruit, lemon. It's a new one. Eau de France. It's very strong and long lasting. Tell me, did you book her tickets? Yes. What is the flight number? L0754. Thanks, Sergi. Well, Major, everything's fine. I met Mr. Cervoni. We are going to the car. We'll be at the office in an hour. Run right back to the registration desk now. Flight L0754 to New York. Karpenko has a business class ticket. We need to stop her. Don't approach her. Let the security service search her. They have every right to do that. She has Shannon's necklace on her. I got it. On my way. Ilya, we'll have to stick around for a bit. What's going on? We are going back to meet your old friend. Vera, do you smoke? Of course I don't. These are for Yulia. She smokes very rarely. I only bring her some when she asks, not to tempt her. What cigarettes does she smoke? Cigarillos. Aha. Uh -huh. Come with me if you'd be so kind. What is the problem? We need to clear some security issues. We won't delay you. Come this way. What is there? My personal jewelry. I have the right to carry it. Open it. Is that it? Can I go now? Madame Karpenko, I'm afraid you're facing indefinite weather delays. And give the stolen necklace back. Why? Why stolen? It was, it was Shannon's present. We, we were lovers when he divorced. That's enough. Yeager didn't have any women last year. Because of his phobias. Well, he had big problems with potency. Do you know what's bad? A good lawyer can clear Yulia Karpenko. He may build his defense on panic. Say, she came to Shannon, he was shouting at her, freaking out. She came without a gun, and he demanded her to leave the country. Took out the gun. Only we know that she was having a smoke looking over dying Shannon. But in court, this fright might work. Such a pity. I'll talk with her. Wait for the lawyer. She won't say a single word without him. She doesn't need to say anything. I'll talk. Well, I won't talk without my lawyer. 
okay, no problem. We'll wait for your lawyer. I had a friend at the university, not really a friend. I was like your Mila Lajanova, a queen bee. And she was a gray mouse. She was running my errands, bringing us pastries from the canteen. It may look like just a photo, but it's obvious. A queen and her court. Look at the boys looking at her. And you were a gray mouse, a nobody. It is frustrating, I agree. You're trying to copy her even now. You made the same hairdo and the makeup. But they don't suit you. The psychological traumas inflicted in youth are the deepest. I say that as a psychologist. I'm only interested in one thing. But did you fare psychologically to stay in the queen's shadow forever? Huh? By the way, never ask my maid of honor about that. I didn't think about it. But you lost anyway, for the most part. You screwed up. Yes, you made Mila and Smiliak break up, and Shannon promised you patronage for that. But what did you get in the end? Mila is a beautiful and rich heiress. Look, she has half of a million worth of emeralds just on her neck. And you? When you get out of here, nobody will even call you a mouse. Get lost. And Shannon must flipped out when you demanded Mila's emeralds for your emigration and silence. I wonder what he said to you. Was it something courteous? Something like, emeralds don't suit you? No. He was too agitated. To be polite, most likely he simply laughed. It must have brought him to tears. He wasn't laughing anymore while rolling under my feet and coughing blood. And your queen's shadow will show what she's capable of. Right. Hello. Goodbye, Michaelo. Have a nice day. Inga, can I talk to you for a moment? Yes, of course. I heard that you come from a family of doctors. Yes, my parents have been running a private clinic for 20 years. There is one thing, you... Something happened, Lara. No, Lara's fine. The doctors say she will be discharged soon. It's me who needs help. Could, could you recommend me a doctor that can fix my alcohol problems? I mean, for good. Of course. My father is a great expert in this field. I'll give you his number and warn him that you'll be calling in the evening. Okay? Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Hey, where are you running? Stop. Come on, stop. Go have a piss, not thee. <coughs> well, here you go. I hope you'll figure it out. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Where are you going? Thanks. Good luck. Goodbye. What did he want from you? Rather, I wanted something from him. I mean, Milo Lojanova. She asked to give Smiliak her number and tell him that she was hoping that he calls her. I don't know, maybe Smiliak will do fine after all. Some coffee. Maybe. It doesn't look that good. Why? Because there are neither fingerprints nor DNA on your gifts. Well, they have been touched on the outside a lot, but inside, it seems that he lovingly wiped every apple. It's not unexpected. Yan is too smart to slip up over such a minor thing. Why Yan? He told me to call him so. We don't have any other name, and we need to call him something. Fine, let us call him so. Well, the package and apples come from an ordinary shop. The only lead is the photo. 
there is a stamp on the back side. Judging from it, the photo was printed stateside. I'll try to ask my friend when and where the portrait was printed. Fine. And we'll try to trace him when he calls you again. Do you have any ideas? Of course I do. I must try to make him talk. I lack information to create a profile. I'll have to play his ego. Provoke him, tease him to make his tongue slip. It'll be a clue for us. You know, I really don't like the word. Provoke. I saw too many provocations. The last was an hour ago when you nearly got your throat torn out. But it wasn't. Because Sergi and I were close by. Well, that means Sergi and you will always need to be close by. Okay. I must go, it's late. Stop. Tell me which one is from your stateside friend. Here, it's an apple. He knows how much I love them. Why do you think that it was him who sent me a bead for the bracelet? Because you're not taking it off. If I wanted to make you a present, I'd choose something like this too.